Warning, the following video contains unmatched audio to video. I know this is a few seconds behind and it will annoy most of you, but I'm still working to solve this issue. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hey guys, Breakman17 here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off this video by saying uh, I'm moving up in the world of uh, my video making. I now have a microphone, and uh, it's just a simple wired one that connects right into the side of my uh, computer. And uh, I, I kind of like this better because uh, I'm not struggling to try and uh, work with a microphone that's built into the very side of the Mac. Um, I don't have a stand for this yet, so I kind of have to hold it with my hand, but uh, I'd rather sit here and hold it than attempt to like speak to the side way over here. But uh, And I can also get a little bit uh, better video than what's off my normal uh, Kodak Easy Share camera. But that's uh, the camera most of you guys... Uh, or most of the videos I make with. Hopefully I get a better one for Christmas coming up, but I guess we'll uh, we'll find out. Um, I want to start off to today's video by asking uh, a question that was actually asked earlier. Um, Defiant47, if you're watching this, you we've already talked about this, and it's, I think it's still going, but uh, um, I was looking through uh, my feed today on YouTube, and uh, Defiant47 had commented on a video by... ATSF modeler, and he had a, a a pretty good video today about criticism uh, to rail enthusiasts, and um, there's really quite a few ways to break that down. Uh, you can go and break it down into uh, criti criticism from uh, people who aren't rail enthusiasts or modelers. Um, I get that a lot from people at school. They're always like, why do you like trains? Why do you? I'm like, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, I guess it's just one of those things that happens. You don't really... Uh, you don't really know why, unless you actually have a reason. I don't have a reason, so I really don't know why. Um, and then you can break it down into categories of uh, actual modelers, like uh, the folks who are involved with National Model Railroaders Association. Um, I'm not saying all of them are this way, but a lot of them uh, look down on people like me who only have... Um, I guess I've never showed you guys a picture, but I have a... A uh, planko or planko? I don't know. A tackle box, basically that all my trains sit in, and uh, my locomotives cons uh, are basically my SD70 here, uh, C30-7, a GP38 right here, and then a few dummies, and um, I get a lot of a lot of slack from the guys up at the club. But that's one thing to be with a club, but. Uh, these National Model Railroad Association guys will come into shows and ask me why I'm running a 70 with a C30 with a GP38. And then uh, also, if I can get it out of my box here. Oh, I do have it. All right. I didn't know if I had it. Also, uh, a lot of guys, I get a lot of crap for having uh, a 1950s boxcar with a Fred on the end. I don't know if you guys can quite see that flashing there. Yeah, there you go. That's a better view. Um, I get a lot of slack for that one, too. Uh, not only having a Fred, but then being on the end of a train and being a 3M car. If I can get the other door closed, I'll show you. It's a uh, 3M car there. Um, and uh, I know Defiant 47, that's one of your big pet peeves, but uh, those are one of the things you're just going to have to live with. <laughs> um, but uh, go over and check out ATSF Modeler. He makes a great case about it. Um, and we've been commenting on that all day, and uh, he's a pretty cool guy. I uh, I subscribed to him today, and I've been flipping through his videos. He's got uh, some pretty cool stuff up. Um, next thing on my list is uh, for Christmas. Uh, I always get to pick up my stuff because shopping for a rail enthusiast is extremely possible. And uh, I went out to a uh, hobby shop in Grandview, Missouri, called Show Me Model Railroad or Railway Company, Railroad Company, either way. It's a uh, shop out in Grandview. They're right on Main Street. Um, great guys. Fantastic. H-O and N-Scale. Um, I My jaw hit the floor when I saw how much N-Scale stuff they had. It's ridiculous out there. But uh, I picked up an E6. If I can get it out of the light here. There we go. A Broadway Limited E6 uh, in N-Scale with a Pargon 2. Uh, equipped with sound and whatnot. And it's a beautiful locomotive. Um the paint's crisp. The details are all there. It's amazing. But um, I highly do not recommend you buy this until further notice because uh, there is some kind of programming bug because this actually is not my first one. It's been less than a... Where's the receipt here? 
uh, less than a month actually. Um, and this is the fourth locomotive that we've gone through. We brought the first one home and it fizzled out after one hour of runtime, not even moving, just sitting there making sounds and it just fizzled out. So we took it back and uh, he pulled one out of the case and put it on his test track and it fizzled out and grabbed another one and it fizzled out and then he grabbed uh, this fourth one, which is the one I now have, and handed it straight to my grandfather and said, I'm not even going to try and put it on my programming track. And uh, I brought it home and I had it at Gladfest and I ran it maybe an hour total, maybe. I mean, two hours is pushing it, the amount of time I had it up there. Um, maybe two hours of runtime and I cannot command it anymore. I brought it back home, and it's not a, uh, it's not one of the um, problems where you have like, uh, where you don't have it dispatched out of your throttle or anything. Because I was controlling it just before it fizzled out here too. I was playing around with it, and then all of a sudden it wouldn't take command. So I tilted it over and brought it back, and it wouldn't make any sound. So um, it's a great model, but they still need to work out the kink in the programming because. Uh, I don't know what about it it is, but that's the fourth one I've gone through, and um, I had to go out there and return that one now, but uh, I think I have one that's going to replace it. I'm either going to see if I can find a uh, Kato made an Amtrak set. It's a five-car set plus a, what is that, P42, I think is what they're called. I don't know, those real modern ones. But I want it in the uh, phase four paint scheme, that all silver and then the stripe down the side, because uh, when I was growing up, that's what I saw. Um, a lot of a lot of those locomotives and I like that paint scheme over um, all the other ones they've done so um, moral of that story though great model beautiful looking but there is a uh, bug so try to steer clear of that I'm not saying Broadway limited has bad stuff they've actually got some pretty cool stuff but the e6 is I'd steer away from for until I uh, I don't know if I'd for tell you later but uh until either somebody can figure that out or what but uh yeah, I'd steer clear of them. Um, next thing on the list is uh, weathering. Uh, I recently got paid for mowing my girlfriend's lawn twice. And uh, I went out to Hobby Lobby and bought these. I, don't ask me how to pronounce the name on that, but that's it right there. Uh, I bought three packs. I bought sand, light sand and mud, snow soot and rust, and orange rust, gun metal, and silver. And I've been weathering like crazy. I've been weathering like there's no tomorrow. Like I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I've got another th four in my backpack I'm working on. And then my super reliable C30-7 is weathered. Uh, this one's not completely done yet. I still have a little bit of work to do on the underside of it and then the top. But... Uh, I hit it with white and that light, uh, that light, uh, light sand, and then that mud, and uh, it it looks really good. I think uh, personally, when I go to weather, I think I'm gonna do light colors and then dark colors. It just looks a little bit better because um, I tried it on, tested it on a box car before I did it. Uh, my CSX box car over here, and uh, that's uh, try not to burn myself on my light here. Uh, that's right there. That's the dark mud and then the light sand done uh, in that order. And then on this side, I guess it's not a terrible difference, but when you don't have it in such bright a light, in a more of a show setting, that's the uh, light sand and then mud done on top of it. It's just uh, it's just not as bright. I get, Oh, I hit that one with rust and other stuff. Okay, that's why that side looks different. But if I had another model to show you out of my pile back here um just doing a lighter color and then a darker color it looks a little bit better it's not as bright it doesn't look like it's been caked on there and uh some of you guys might like that but personally i don't like my stuff caked in weathering i like it to have that weathered look without that uh, excessive amount uh so yeah that's what i've been doing like crazy just my box and the nice thing is they're only 11 bucks a piece and i was like and considering I've done maybe 15 cars, including that, including three locomotives, and I'm barely starting to scratch the surface on some of these pastel boxes, so um, I'm really liking those. I think I'm going to start buying more of those and different ones and stockpiling that because I really do like those. 
Uh, my fourth and final thing on the list here uh, before I end this video is uh, HO Buildings. And uh, we were talking about this. Uh, I don't know if Defiant 47, if you've seen our in-scale module for our club, but if you go to the show this December, you will. Um, we're currently working on a second one that's an extension of the first one, and uh, the yard needs a building to house a double pull switch for um, some isolated track. And uh, if you guys want to know what I'm talking about, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll make a video about the first and second module and the way it'll all hook up. It, it's a process, but uh, we needed a building to cover. Uh, that double pull throw, and I mean, it's maybe that big. I mean, maybe about the size of my finger to about my second, or the end of my finger to my second joint, uh, wide, and then about my whole index finger long. And uh, I had some HO buildings from when I used to do uh, really cheap HO layouts on the floor. I mean, just simple stuff kids do. And uh, I actually broke a double decker, or not necessarily a double decker, but a two story warehouse building. Here, and I actually broke it down. So now the top part is basically one building, and the bottom part is a whole another building. And as you can see, I really had to tear this thing off. The uh, <laughs> it was on a base, and uh, there's the freight platform that was on the outside of the shed doors there. But uh, I really had to get in there with a pair of screwdrivers because the glue on this was so tight. Um, I had to literally go through and twist everything and try to pry it apart, but the top part came off really nice. I think I'm going to use that as like a machine shop, and I'm trying to out, might try and outfit an in-scale door on this side and just make it like a small parts machine shop or something. Either that or I can use the uh, this building facing away like this, and then for the top do a sh panel of styrene, and then I saw a guy do really fine grit sandpaper on, ro on the roof, and... Uh, doing a small styrene border around it so it looked like that real loose uh, roofing material and it looked really good so uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna just use this building or if I'm gonna try and put this building and then the other one coming off of it at an L or I might put them both square I don't know I still have uh, I still have till December to figure that out but uh, I just know we had to have something to hide that double throw and it'll go back behind the engine facility um, yeah, I don't know if I will make a video about the uh, two modules before December rolls around. Um, if you guys do want to see the modules and uh, have me explain how everything's going to work before December, put a comment down in the comment section below. Just mention something about the modules and if there's a good chunk of you. I know not, not a ton of you uh, watch my videos, but if there's a few of you who do want to see it, I'll go in with the with uh, my little camera, wherever I put it, oh, over here, my easy share camera, and I'll go in and explain the uh, the setup of the whole video, so. All right, guys, well, that's all I have for today's video. Uh, we will catch you on the flip side. Brakeman out.